Okay, so today, uh, today's the topic is natural language processing, and I'll be discussing what exactly this is, what is the use cases, what are the different things we can do with the natural language processing. So first thing, what exactly the natural language processing? Uh, this is something that we are doing right now. Uh, you can see I am talking, you are listening. Uh, you can relate my words, you can understand my things, what uh, I'm trying to say here, you can understand the meaning, whatever the <clears throat> sentence I'm uh, reading, and you can interpret the meaning uh, if I'm saying anything to you. So this is all about the natural language processing. Uh, it come to the computer or robot. If you talk about any computer and robot, how exactly they can understand as human behavior how exactly they can interpret the meaning what a human is saying as far because human can understand different things but as far you can say about the computer or robots they can only understand few things so this is where we have the uh, natural language processing that will allow us to understand human linguistic so they can provide more human like behavior so <clears throat> I already provided my introduction. So I'll start with uh, what exactly the inside this presentation. First thing we'll uh, talk about the introduction, how exactly NLP will work, different phases of NLP, capabilities, what exactly we can achieve in such group work. We will talk about the different modules that are available uh, already and what exactly we can do with those modules. So, <clears throat> First thing about the natural language processing as a definition. So if you talk about natural language processing, it referred to a branch of computer science and more specifically the branch of artificial intelligence, the AI. It's more concerned with the giving computer the ability to understand text and spoken word in much the same very human being can. So as you can say, by the definition, it's all <clears throat> about to understand the text and words that <clears throat> that how human can understand and this provide capability to computer or <clears throat> a robot so they can understand uh, more like human. So if you talk about the example, like let's suppose you or uh, everyone knows about the Alexa series, how exactly they are understanding our action. Like when we talk about, hey Siri, do something like the action that is part of uh, NLP, how they are understanding the human behavior. Because we can say anything to say, uh, like Alexa, just turn on my lights or switch off the light. But in terms of uh, uh, natural language processing, this is how they interpret the action that they need to perform as human are saying. So the natural language processing is part of uh, like consists two kind of a component. First thing is natural language generation, uh, natural language understanding. So when we talk about the natural language processing, what exactly this will do? If we <clears throat> say anything, any unstructured data, and we need to provide something that computer can understand. The first part is natural language understanding. So how computer can understand the data. So we need to provide unstructured data and convert it to some structured data. So this is this is what we call natural language understanding. So again, in the reverse phase, with the natural language understanding, we have a structured data. And by using those textual data, computer can provide or can <clears throat> uh, generate human-like language, a sentence, that is called human, uh, natural language generation. So this is all natural language processing scenario. So there is an unstructured data. Like let's suppose take an example about the, uh, if we talk about let's uh, add something to my shopping list or let's uh, take an example like banana and apple just add to my shopping list. This is unstructured. I understand what exactly I'm saying, but in terms of a, a computer, I need to describe like what exactly the shopping list element, what are the different items that I need to add in a programming language. So that is called natural language understanding. And using that structured data, computer can also action or provide sentence that is called natural language generation. 
Why I'm talking about this natural language processing at this moment, this is because I got some figure from the uh, very famous uh, uh, like Statista. There's a uh, data provider. They provide this, these analytics. So you can see this is uh, about the natural language market value of the natural language process. So you can see in 2020, this is all about only 16 billion. And in 2028, the expectation is around 127 billion. So that is the huge market that is available that uh, we can do something in uh, as part of the natural language processing. This is the other figure in terms of revenue, what you can generate uh, if you are implementing in your business. Uh, uh, so you can see this is the revenue growth you can see as part of a business. This is all in the millions of US dollars. So this is that uh, again, the, from the Statista 2017 to 2025, you can see the trend is always increasing and year by year, you can see the huge difference is there. Okay, so how exactly the NLP works? So in, in context of like, you can see uh, one diagram uh, in my right. So this is like, let's suppose a person is a, a, a IT help desk and is asking for something like, uh, where is the IT help desk? As human, I can understand and I can provide it's on third floor or something somewhere or in this building or that building. But as a computer, if he don't know the context, he don't know the uh, exact definition, he don't know NLP, then he might uh, provide you the address in latitude and longitude. So that's why we need a NLP so we can provide more uh, user uh, like we can understand the human behavior and computer can answer in, in a more, more human way. So it, as part of NLP, NLP can process text, can also part of uh, audio, video, anything. In in the input text, NLP process the language. Language could be anything. It's not about the English or something like that. It can be any language, anything we can do. Using that uh, NLP algorithm, we need to extract the entity, extract the relationship between those things, and we can classify the topics, what, what exactly the text or what ex exactly the speech is all about. And we can also do the, some sentiment analysis on top of that. So what kind of, uh, like if I'm talking about some topic and what sentiment is behind that particular topic. So <laughs> next part is phases of NLP. This is very uh, critical part in and if you are implementing NLP, you need to understand how NLP uh, work. So there are few phases of NLP. This is lexical analysis, statical analysis, semantic discourse and integration, and programmatic, programmatic analysis. So <clears throat> these are the phases one by one. And so every output of the one phase is input of another phase. And somehow we will get the final <clears throat> output after the final stage text analysis what exactly the lexical means this is more about how you uh, understand the meaning of a word so this analysis is kind of a process that convert words into sequence of tokens so if i'm talking about like i'm presenting uh, nlp today so there is a sentence or there could be a paragraph, like you can see there are two paragraphs. So the first part of NLP process is that I, I will convert these paragraph or sentences in a lower level. So the tokenization is the first part where I can convert a sentence into a word. So <clears throat> first thing we will do as a lexical analysis is a tokenization. So we just convert like uh, a lexical analysis is the process of converting. Everything is a token. Then the second thing we will do as part of lexical analysis is a <clears throat> removal of stop words, like is the of a of, because those are like words, but not making any sense without a sentence. So only thing like if we talk about analysis, converting, sequence, those these are the words that have some meaning. Next part that we need to do as a part of lexical analysis is stemming and limitation. Both are similar but in a such a way that uh, we need to identify the root word of a uh, particular word. Like root word means like if you are talking about, uh, let's talk about running, uh, an example, run, running. So 
at the removing the prefix suffix from any word and get the root word of that particular word stem that is called stemming limitation is similar but the actual meaning if if you are converting a, uh, getting a root word that should have some meaning a dictionary meaning so that is part of limitation stemming and limitation only difference is we will get after limitation we will get a word that have a dictionary meaning or a, a, a vocabulary that exists in a particular language so this is the first thing that we will do as part of nlp so lexical analysis so after the lexical analysis we will understand that these are the words these are the token available and these are the words that uh, available <clears throat> to process further so second phase of this particular uh, nlp is syntactic analysis so using the first uh, <clears throat> lexical analysis we have some words and there is a part of speech tagging that we need to do on those words like maybe a word cannot have some meaning but if you add two words that might have something some meanings to that so with part of syntactic analysis and parsing is a process of analyzing a string of symbols it's in the natural language computer language or any that have some kind of a formal grammar rule so all the grammar rules are applied to group of words not individual words it's always about the group of words because the grammar can apply if you have a particular sentence so this is also called a part of speech taking another uh, phase this provide a full sentence that could have some meaning that could not have some meaning like uh, if i'm talking about a truck it, eating orange apple apple is eating banana those those are sentences you can say the syntax is correct grammar is correct but that doesn't make any sense because a truck cannot eat oranges so this is what the it, as part of the syntactic analysis we will form the sentences from the words that we uh, get from the initial phase lexical analysis now the semantic analysis this is the part where we define the sentence in a way that have some or meaningful sentence you can say so syntactic analysis provide a sentence that have some meaning or does not have some meaning but with the semantic analysis we will get the sentence in a way that have something meaning what we need to do as a syntactic uh, se semantic analysis is just capture the meaning of given text word it consider the context of the particular sentence structuring of the sentence and grammar rules everything comes together and we will build the relationship between the individual words so co reference resolution semantic role labeling word sense disambiguation named entity recognition these are the different things that we will do as part of a semantic analysis <coughs> oh sorry uh, my screen is still you can see my screen yes we can Okay, so uh, in terms of semantic analysis, uh, like if we talk about a particular word, uh, like uh, will, will, will can be a name, will can be a or uh, like verb. You can use like I I will showcase this in my presentation, or will is going to somewhere uh, to attend some dinner or something like that. So the word. it matter where how exactly we are using in our language so it, it need, we need to understand how the computer can understand that ambig ambiguity as part of this uh, analysis semantic analysis we recognize every <clears throat> uh, reference of the word we will labelize those what what exactly this is verb noun article adjective what are uh, the different things in the particular sentence the last thing that the Name. This is thing like if a word can be a name, can a location, or uh, anything could be like if I talk about I went to a bank. A bank can be a financial institution, or could be a river, or something like that. So it's name entity recognition. It's defined what kind of entity we are talking about. So if we are talking about a particular name, so it it provide you that it it is a name, it is a location. so if we <clears throat> receive a, a something like truck eating oranges from uh, our previous phase 
this will be ignored from the information summary because it doesn't have any kind of meaning. After that, the next step is discourse analysis. This is where we uh, uncover the motivation behind the tips. Means like what we are trying to say, the meaning of a, a spoken or written text as it considered the so social or historical context. Because like, let's take an example of Mike got ready at 9 a.m. Later he took the train to Brisbane. So uh, like as a human, I can understand what he word is referring to, but as a computer, I cannot understand what exactly he is referring to. So as part of this analysis, we will we, uh, this define the reference between uh, the words within the sentence that we can relate to each other and figure out like what exactly a person is trying to say and uh, how a computer will be, behave as part of action, his action on that. Uh, so if you talk about the simple question answer, like if you are talking on a chat board, uh, so and you ask something, uh, and you can ask anything, but a, a smart chat board using the NLP can provide more like human behavior and you will get an exact uh, like good answer uh, in a human manner. The last phase of the NLP is pragmatic analysis. This is the part of the process of to, to get all the information from the given sentence, given text. So it it focus on taking a structure, set of texts, figure out the actual meaning of the text. It's like, uh, it's let's like, take an example about a uh, few slangs or something like that. It's the piece of cake. It's uh, like, it, didn't, it couldn't be better. So these sentence can, human can understand easily because we do have some context. But to understand a computer, how exactly can computer understand? So these, this is the part where it analyzes those uh, sentences, what exactly the meaning behind them, what exactly the context they are talking about. Uh, it is like something uh, historical or it's what exactly it's based on. So it, it, this part of analysis will provide you, uh, like maybe if, I, if I'm saying just close the door. Uh, this is something it may be on order or it, if I'm saying, please close the door, it could be a request. So in that particular context, a computer can understand in this analysis, we will provide a computer to ability that he can understand what is the context behind the uh, certain text that we are talking about. So this is the whole phases of uh, programmatic analysis, the last phase of the NLP. After that, so this six phases uh, include whole processing of uh, sentence to word, word to, uh, we first we do the tokenization, we get the structured data. So using the structured data, we are getting uh, like information, what, what is the relation between those words, those token. Then we also analyze the entity, named entity, like uh, it's a location, it's a name of person, what exactly it is. Then we analyze the final, if the sentence has some meanings or not, then we can finally provide input to uh, our ML or deep learning analysis. This is where we can put our uh, middleware. It, it is possible that you can use a static algorithm to analyze all the steps, or you can also utilize a uh, machine learning or deep learning algorithms so they can understand time by time and they can learn whatever input we are uh, providing to them. So this is like uh, whatever the phase we, are, we were talking about, a uh, simple example, you can see uh, how exactly we <laughs> perform the phases in NLP. So this is simple sentence, a dog is chasing a boy on the playground. So lexical analysis, part of speech tagging, you can see it defined what is noun, verb, pronoun, everything. And then it categorized in a word, verb phase. And then we will introduce a sentence that is called of a syntactic analysis. So using that sentence, we will, uh, the next phase is about semantic analysis. That will provide you the exact meaning that the particular sentence is meaningful or not. Then we will get the final, say a person, maybe uh, this is the reference uh, final output 
of a computer can understand mm-hmm. what like if i'm talk, saying a dog is chasing a boy on the playground a computer how exactly it can act the person saying this may be reminding another person to get the dog back so mm-hmm. this is human can understand similar way a computer can understand after these nlp phases these are the simple use cases that we can perform using the nlp so the most uh, good thing about the language translation if we are talking about language translation a every language have some set of different kind of rules different vocab different grammatical rules and different structure to uh, make the sentences and all so when you, we are trying to do language translation this is the very good uh, algorithm that we can use as search engine result if we are talking about like uh, google introduced this is in later 2018 or 2019 so after that google provided a very good result because of the nlp it can understand the context what user are searching for like suppose uh, if you are looking for a train or bus you if you just write it will also pop up you something that you can book directly from there so this how exactly the they are doing it using the nlp <laughs> smart assistant if we already discussed about like siri alexa any virtual assistant that we are doing they are learning from the human behavior and applying the nlp on, on that and and like performing action uh, customer service automation this is all about the way you can say uh, chatbots is also categorized in uh, customer service automation but yeah in terms of nlp if you are receiving something some uh, like uh, if you are getting feedback from some uh, a web form or uh, like uh, uh, a forum discussion or uh, like you have a blog post where you can uh, receive uh, multiple information from there so uh, you can apply nlp in email filters as well like in the spam detection you can analyze the words uh, that human normally use and you can find the abusive words using the uh, nlp and yeah, you can get a smart email filters available uh, like there are different use cases that you can think of as a human you can do nlp can also do those kind of thing that so uh, these are the available uh, resources available products uh, that is based on nlp so ibm watson is a very good product that is available and you can easily utilize this and implement in your uh, it's a paid version but yeah i think you can utilize this google is also providing its cloud natural language apis so you can utilize them and uh, like implement in your project okay uh let me show you the one uh, good example of like how ibm watson uh, doing the natural language understanding this is a very simple example like let me show it to you uh you can see my screen yes my chrome yeah okay so uh this is the url in my sheet like this is uh, <clears throat> api demo they are providing uh you can use input text here or you can use the url whatever you can do uh let's talk about like i'm taking an example on the test board like i i'm just taking a few words from here so i can understand what exactly you are talking about So if I put some text here and analyze this, so uh, this is the output of uh, language natural language processing. So what you can get, these are the entities that we are talking about in this particular example. Uh, this is NASA draft sp- uh, spacecraft. So you can say NASA is an organization. This is uh, entities. All are the entities that they define. Uh, in this particular text there are different keywords that are attached to it so you can see the relevancy score using that you can tag your blog or your uh, content uh, with those keywords that are meaningful or are relevant to you if you talk about the linguistic so you can see scientists 
and what kind of action they are performing. So different kind of classification on uh, things are provided by the Watson APIs. So you can integrate this Watson API and you can uh, like perform analysis on your text, on your blog post, on your uh, any any kind of text. It doesn't matter if you're talking about a blog or website. It, it could be like if you are working on some different kind of uh, scenario. So uh, if sentiment score, uh, if sentiment analysis is very good, like uh, if you are receiving uh, multiple feedback of uh, on your blog post, on your polls or, or any forum, you can analyze the sentiments of those comments, what exactly the user are trying to say, they are liking it, not liking it. So what kind of sentiment that <coughs> comments are providing. So you can extract that information, feed it to uh, natural language processing, and it will provide you score according to your input text. So this is basic example that uh, you can get these much information from the uh, natural language processing. Uh, similar way, Google is also working in a similar way. Uh, I can showcase you the Google API as well. Uh, I'm using the same text and I have this and I'm analyzing the Google now. The same way you can see, uh, like this is the Watson, this is Google API. So uh, it provide you like what a scientist, the person name, space rock, like dart, prop. So whatever the entities are available in this particular text, they will provide you uh, as part of extraction. You can see the sentiments of the entire document, it's provide a score, magnitude, what kind of sentiment uh, this particular uh, text provide. So this is, you can also utilize similar things in your project with the CMS as well. Like this is uh, the, the phases that we discuss about how, how they are tokenizing, how they are uh, like providing the part of speech tagging. Like this is noun, verb. So this is how they are uh, extracting the information from a sentence. So it's a paragraph, paragraph to sentence, sentence to word, word, then they get the reference between those words, then they understand the meaning behind that, behind sentiment behind that particular text, and then they will action on the uh, final natural language generation. So this is part like you can utilize. Uh, so uh, again, let's talk about more with Drupal. Okay, so NLP, how exactly you can utilize in your CMS? So I, I will provide you some use cases that we can integrate Drupal to be a smart CMS, I, I would say, because it's a part of artificial intelligence. I'm, I'm not saying it's always a machine learning or artificial intelligence because NLP can be a static algorithm as well. It depends on you how exactly you uh, are implementing it because NL, uh, NLP can combine with the machine learning or deep learning algorithms to provide more uh, accurate output to learn day by day uh, using the input text and all. But yeah, so so far NLP <clears throat> with Drupal, uh, there are certain use cases that we can do. This first thing that we can do with the, in a CMS mm -hmm. is a content classification. This is a very simple thing that we are doing. Uh, whenever we create some content, we used to use some tags, some uh, categorization with the uh, different uh, vocabularies, different different set of vocabularies we have for a particular article. Like if we are talking about blog, we normally used to have tags that these are related to the uh, these tags. And using those tags, you will showcase the related content uh, on the website. So first thing, you can automate this content classification in Drupal or in any CMS uh, using the NLP. So NLP will take the input, uh, text input, whatever you are providing in your article, and then it will classify that per document according to algorithm, and uh, this data can be stored again in your node or content. 
again the second part is sentiment analysis like as a content editor or uh, like you are writing some article and uh, like it could be a big article and maybe you you want to understand what kind of sentiment that's a whole article will provide to uh, end user so you can do sentiment analysis on those types and also if you are receiving some input some comments uh, uh, on some feedback on your blog post you can uh, process those using the nlp and figure out that uh, you are talking about this uh, article and but the user are uh, saying negative things about this article or positive things or it's in neutral so this is the again good use case where you you are more user centric like it's, if you talk about the government websites government uh, projects and they normally ask for a feedback so uh, like in most of the government site i saw in a bottom of the page uh, was this useful or not so maybe uh, using that particular form we are receiving input but are we analyzing those input or not <laughs> you can automate that process using uh, the nlp and you can analyze like yeah definitely if user are talking about something you can uh, change your things or uh, maybe so this is one other use case text summarization <laughs> like this is very basic when we are talking about a, a blog post or uh, any content we are writing in our website so normally we have a teaser available because we cannot have uh, everything on a home page so most of the time we have a different set of blogs available where we are showing a teaser of a particular node or particular content so uh, in most cases user normally do uh, like uh, like split the first few sentence as part of summary something like that we normally do or we have a different summary field to provide uh, summary text and so this is the manual thing using the nlp what you need to do you can uh, integrate nlp as part of a summary generation and whatever the input you are providing it will automatically extract some summary uh, you can define some words like how much how many words should be there in the summary and it will provide you the uh, summary part so this can be useful if you are talking about the summary this is also useful if you uh, talk about the meta keywords uh, like seo and meta uh, meta keywords if uh, we are doing some seo uh, so normally we need to provide the title some keywords some uh, minor summary text for a web page so using the nlp you can analyze the text and automatically fill up those data so you don't need to uh, do a manual thing uh, this is another use case like using the image uh, the nlp can also stream the image and get the different uh, like attributes from a particular image so this is uh, again useful when you are uh, adding images and you want to create some alternate text and title to that image but normally uh, we used to have a title of article we just put into the image but what exactly the image are saying you you can utilize the nlp to get those data so it, you can see this is uh, like uh, I, I forgot from where, where exactly i got this but yeah there is an api uh, provided for the image screening they just uh, if you just upload the image they will provide you what kind of image it is and what are the different information you can uh, see so this is another part so you can do nlp to create alternate tags to tag image to extract the caption from the image itself you can automate that part so as i mentioned uh, like seo metadata generation i already uh, <clears throat> duplicate content yeah this is also one other good use case when you are publishing something on your website and nlp can also do uh, can also parse the data and check over the web somewhere uh, like it's a implementation it's it I, i'm not sure you can do by yourself in your project but yeah overall nlp can do something like that it uh, crawl the data uh, look into different places different urls and uh, specify that you are using the duplicate content or not and smart content editor if you talk about a like you normally use the gmail 
so when you start writing <coughs> oh, sorry about that so uh, in gmail when you start typing it it provides you some auto suggestion or uh, like uh, auto completion like hello uh, if i'm replying to something and if i just write hi it will automatically populate the name of the person that i'm replying to and when you're saying thank you for the this or i'm attaching so if you are attaching something that it will also populate like uh, attaching a document or a image so the auto completion auto suggestion that can be uh, populated by as nlp so google is doing very good in nlp market right now they are providing very good stuff using the api as well and there are few modules available in drupal uh, I'll, I'll show you a very basic uh, demo using the uh, NLP. There's a module available uh, to summarize uh, text, to generate the text summary and the tags. Uh, so these are the Drupal modules available that you can utilize uh, to implement the NLP. You are easily available, you can easily implement. IBM Watson integration is also available. Google uh, Natural Language API integration is available, but this is not stable. Uh, but yeah, I think you can utilize it somehow. Um, let me show you how uh, this module, the intelligent tools, is working. Uh, so I have installed a one normal uh, Drupal site. It's a simple installation, and I have also enabled <coughs> an NP related model. So you can see my Chrome, right? Yes, you yeah. can. So, uh, this NLP tool intelligent, this module has three uh, modules actually. This is one is a top module, and those two are the, these are two sub modules available in the the auto tag and the tag summarize. These two things are available as part of the NLP intelligence. So uh, how exactly we can configure? It's a simple step to configure. Just enable this and you have configuration to enable auto tag or tag summary. So first thing, uh, let me show you how auto tag can be configured. So this is auto tagging rule that you want to configure. So what you need to do is just provide the content type for which content type you want to configure this from where <clears throat> the text should be extracted and uh, in which field we need to insert the tags and how many tags you want to insert in, in the page. And let's suppose three, four, whatever. And this is all good. So now uh, I have this tagging rule available i can create content i'm taking another this simple sample I'm not providing any tags right now. And um, if I save this. You can see these are the auto tags that uh, this module extracted and added. So this module is using a text rank algorithm. This is not a machine learning or uh, any uh, deep learning analysis. This is the text rank algorithm. So this algorithm just uh, like uh, it tokenized the sentence or paragraph first, and uh, this algorithm assign the rank to particular words one by one uh, using a tree. There is a structure uh, to draw down the a graph. So when we have a sentence, then words, then relationship, and then we identify the particular rank of a word, and according to those ranks and all, it uh, automate uh, the tagging system of a particular uh, text. Uh, similar way, we uh, I also have a configuration for a text summary. 
So NLP auto text summarize. So in this, the same thing we need to get the article. That this is the content type that I want to uh, enable the auto summary, and from where the body field uh, extract from. So just save it, and if I go to the article, you can see my summary is automatically populated with the few words, not the whole word. So this is the model. This is the basic model, and there are more module available. So the text summarization, uh, like this is the text summarization. This is another model that you can utilize. This is also using the similar algorithm. Uh, text summarization. Uh, you can say a graph-based ranking algorithm for NLP. It's an executive summarization technique that relies on extracting several parts, such as phrases, sentence from a piece of text and stack them together to create a summary. So this is a static algorithm that these modules are using, but we can uh, apply the machine learning on top of this and can have a good uh, use cases that we can do. Um, okay. So I'm sharing my last things. Yeah, so yeah, this is all good. There are some sources and reference that I mentioned. Uh, you can look into that. This is text rank algorithm that I was talking about. So there's a GitHub repo available for the PHP. So you can implement uh, by yourself as well. Uh, 